So here are a couple of reports that I recommend that every report admin build for themselves to govern the custom reports that are being developed in the system and the usage. So as usual, I usually pack them in this menu. Um, and then here is my report admin role. Yeah. And so the first report that I, that I recommend is this custom reports analysis. It just simply gives you the total number of custom reports in the system. Now this is pretty high. <laughs> Typically you, you expect to see you know, around 1,000 over here yeah. in a normal tenant between 1,000 and 2,000, I think is manageable. Now, um, the first thing that I usually do is I just check a couple of governance features, right? I check the usage of data sources, right? Uh, on what data sources these reports been written. And yes, I like to see workers for ACM reporting being used um, um, and trained workers being used. Yeah? So, because that's, this is your analytics data source. This is your worker data data source. This all active and terminated workers is an old data source that is pretty slow, should only be used for expected data reporting. Right? So there's a couple of things I check over here. Um, the other things that I obviously like looking at is um, the report type. Right? So this gives me an idea of what you're doing in your tenant. Are you doing analytics or are you just providing data, right? So advanced really is mostly providing data reports, right? Or kicking off processes, but I doubt it if you have that many processes you're kicking. So you're just providing data, right? What I like to see is a high percentage of matrix reports because this is providing analytics. And what I also like to see is that composite reporting is being used because that is really where you're doing advanced analytics like ratio calculations. So, um, and then the other drill down I typically look at is the uh, um, uh, sharing option, right? I mean, how reports shared in all the, in, in, in tenants. Yeah. I really like to see that you should be sharing to specified groups. Yeah. That's the option that should be the most used. What's happening in this term, of course, is most of these reports aren't shared, right? So if a report's not shared, the question is why it's even being used. Yeah? Why is it even there? Why is it developed? Yeah? And authorized users is obviously not a great idea. Right? So you should be sharing to specified groups. Uh, and then obviously a very useful one is always to check here a number of times executed, right? So it tells you, um, shows you immediately like 74 percent of these reports aren't being executed now it's um this is obviously a gms tenant yeah a play tenant for us you'll be surprised what the percentages are in many tenants that i see a uh, production tenants um see i see and uh, you know it's, it's it's fairly high right and so this is a great opportunity to start cleaning up so what you would do here is if these aren't used check if they're even temporary right so all temporary reports can be taken out of the system Little known fact is even though a report has been marked for temporary, it's not going to be deleted, right? So you go ahead and say, um, a delete temp reports. Um, this is what you need to do, right? And you need to run this. So you, can, you should actually be scheduling it because now once you run it, it's going to delete all those temporary reports. Uh, and so these aren't temporary, right? So then again, the next question is, um, are they shared? Yeah. And if they not run, not shared, these are ones you could definitely, this is where you would then start talking to the report owners and understanding you know, who's, who's using these reports. What you could do is um, remove all the sharing options from these reports, like put them on garden leave then. And then if they're not, if no one asks for them, um, then eventually you, you can start deleting those reports, right? So there's you know, kind of deactivating the tenant by closing down the sharing. Um, and, then, and, and then to see if no one asks for the reports, you can start deleting those reports. So very useful uh, little worklet uh, that allows you to manage uh, the reports and Custom reports and the system, and it's super simple, right? It's on the data source or custom reports. I just use an empty instance over here and just a count and a percentage of total here, these two counts, and then just these drill downs. Yeah? That's all that was to it. Data source report type temporary sharing option. Number of times executed is interesting. You need to then have it in detailed data as well. Custom report, report on a number of times executed. Once you put that there, yeah, you get through to on the prompt side uh, and you can populate the prompt and it's gonna ask you what run history start and end date. The end date I always put it today and the start date is first day six months ago. Please note reporting history is only kept for six months. So there's your first report that you would certainly um, be 
find very useful. I always find it useful as a report admin. The next one is to see, I mean, how reports, um, uh, the next one is to see, you know, who has, who, who is the report owner, uh, technical owner of a report and, and where do they sit in the organization kind of gives you an idea of where reports are being created in the organization. And so you're, this is the report that shows you that. So um, it's showing me that of all these custom reports that are actually owned by people in the supervisory org, right? So remember when I ran the first one, we had 7,000. Well, you know, those are created by implementers that are not in the org, right? Many of them, right? But these are now reports owned, created uh, by users that are part of the supervisory org. And then you can, what, what I do is here is you have a look where they are created, right? So here, you can see that well, quite a lot of reports are in HR, right? Created by HR. Here's, here, here's HR, right? Um, and you can just find out who's the report owner here. And it's, it's Miles Logan, right? obviously. It's a great report created. And then you can maybe question things like executive management, or well, who's owning, <laughs> who's a custom, who's the owner of a custom report over here. Um, so there's, there's a couple of rules that I think this is very useful to see where your organization reports have been created. Hence, that ownership of the report uh, has to be maintained. Yeah. So you, you need to maintain that um, and, and, and make sure it's, and transfer the ownership to the, the person who really technically owns the report, right? Such that this is gonna start to work. I mean, I guess that's part of the governance. So for example, here, what I'm talking about here is that um, if I, I'm just gonna go into this one over here and just edit here this field over here called owner, and then in the share option, you have the report owner, report owned by. This should always be the person in your organization who's currently technically responsible for this report. And hence, when you have a, a consultants working for you and they, and they finish with the project, they should transfer that ownership to whoever the report owner is gonna be in the organization. So once you have that all fixed up, then you can just really make a lot of sense, right? So I think that's just another governance task that I would definitely recommend everyone to do. Okay, so this is, goes around report ownership. So you can see, you know, kind of where our reports been created and who owns them, you know, to make sure that that's actually in line with the governance structure. And remember, we always recommend a centralized reporting team that owns the reporting governance. Um, and you can have decentralized report writers, right? But the, this kind of work that you're doing over here needs to be done by a centralized organization, a person, organization as well. And then the last report um, that's really obviously, so it's just uh, reports run by a supervisory organization. And so here, oh, wait a minute, didn't tell you how the second report was built, right? So report ownership, yeah. So this is a composite report. It has an outline structure on organization and using a hierarchy supervisory organization. So here's your out, here's your business object of organization and it's organized supervisory organization you know, on organization. That's your hierarchy structure. Uh, just to expose that. And that's a great outline structures. Um, yeah. Outline structures on organization is using a hierarchy, but it's using a supervised hierarchy. And to my earlier point about, I'd like to see composite report usage. You can now see why composite reporting is so important, right? Specifically around the use of hierarchy reporting. Uh, and so that was the, con that's the setup here. Then obviously the control field is organization, right? With that outline structure. Now the data column here. Uh, is this sub report and it is written on the data source or custom reports it's a matrix of course right and it's got here it's just, here's your supervisor organization that it brings in yeah. and it's looking at it from the report owner right so that's why that owner is important here yeah. so it's looking up from the report owner and bringing back the supervisor organization and the report owner unfortunately also look up related field um, where is the report and it needs to return the worker, right? So once you have the worker, you can look up the supervisory organization. So that's that row grouping. Here's a simple count and they're off the, in the drill down. It's just, you know, um, customer report and um, again, this worker. Okay. So that was the definition of that report. So you guys can rebuild it. 
And now let's have a look at the last one. And that is report admins and report runs by super org, right? So this basically tells you um, there's 99,000 report runs in the last six months, of course, um, for GMS. Yeah? Um, it's 10 unique users have been running it uh, against the headcount that makes only 2% of your population is actually using reporting, right? Now, this is obviously a GMS tenant where there's no users really on it, except when we log in as Logan, right? So um, and that's, that's, that's the one statistic point. And then obviously here it runs per unique user. Yeah, you can also see that. And now when you open it up, you can clearly see this is HR, right? So all of this is um, pretty much, most of the run time runs are in human resources. And then obviously if you, yeah, if you go down on any HR ops, HR, HR, human resources, yeah. And if you find out who's this, um, the job profile here, uh, I'll, you know, of the person and it'll be the, you'll see it's vice person HR. So you can always use this. I, I do a drill down by job profile just to say which users are actually running these reports. Yeah. Okay. And obviously I could have also do a drill down by the actual user. Right? I mean, that'll be useful as well. But I mean, exactly. You see the number of report runs, how many unique users are there? What's the headcount in the organization? So the percentage of users that are actually using it and then runs per unique user, right? Just to see are there heavy users uh, in the system. All useful information for you to follow up and, and, and have um, you know, qualified discussions. Now the definition of it here, again, we're with uh, control fields of um, this organization, supervisory organization as before. Again, that's a composite here. Yeah. Uh, here's again your control field. It is the same as org and soup org outline. And now here's your report runs. Yeah? And so now this is the first data point coming in. It is a matrix report that is being built on that object, that index report run history. Um, and it's bringing back the supervisory organization of the requester. Yeah, whoever when that re report re run request, yeah? so it's requested by and bring the super org back. Uh, and then you have all those data points and then you have count and here's your count distinct, right? For requested by that gives you unique users, right? And then here's the drill down. As we said, you know, the requester would be useful, right? So we can simply add that here. Custom report edit. And drill down and request by by so we can see who's running here so obviously this is going to be logan we're going to run the report of course um now that was the report runs here yeah. and unique users was is just simply using that count distinct yeah. so that's the so that's a count distinct it's using that count distinct on the same server report and then here's a basic, this, this is one that just brings the head count in by that supervisory organization, the current head count, you know, making it easy. Yeah. And so this one is written on um, a very workers face and reporting like we wanted, all active workers, and it's got the supervisory organization as grouped by, and it's just doing a simple count. So that brings the number of users in there. And then obviously you got your two calculations, right? Percentage of users is to divide calculated field, calculate column, column type calculation, just divided by that, specified and here's runs per unique users is total runs divided by, by unique users. And then here piece, this piece of course, as uh, at the lookup data by supervised organization, right? So you got the organization here in the hierarchy global modern services, and using the outline structure with that row filter criteria. All right. And so now that we added the user in there, I can show you, we should have this drill down, it should be requested by, you can see you know, all of these, most of these, probably Logan. Yeah, it's mostly Logan. So there you go. And I hope that you have found this useful.